Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. I thought it would be time for a Bitcoin update. We've had our US election now. We know our winner. Uh, whether happy or sad, it's obviously positive news for the crypto industry. Seems to be positive news for the stock markets also, all responding favorably to the news. So now it's a business as usual. We can talk about the likelihood of with a lot more certainty of what's going to happen. You know, it's really eliminated a lot of scenarios, this outcome. Um, so, yeah, that uncertainty has been wiped off the table. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Bitcoin higher time frame outlook. I'll review the, the kind of major picture that we're looking at. I'll go into it in a, some relative detail because it's been a while since the last video. Obviously, we'll fine tune this smaller time frame scenarios as to how this could have potentially played out, this consolidation and you know what's likely to continue from here and obviously the upside target which is no different from previously discussed there's really been no change um the only thing really to add is that we can eliminate some of the more bearish scenarios now uh, and as i say just to get everyone up to speed we'll look at the higher time frame outlook i do want to compare the bigger picture with the elliot from an elliot wave scenario with the dow jones so we'll be looking at that we've got the big ending diagonal that I believe is forming both on Bitcoin and the Dow Jones which started here with the COVID crash March 2020 and we are currently in the third leg of that which we've got our upside targets and then we can expect a pretty sizable pullback before a humongous further move to the upside so plenty more upside to come but yeah one step at a time. Um, on top of that, with coming back to Bitcoin, I want to throw out this really important chart. This is our monthly camera of pivots, and it's been so telling, um, you know, for the last, so this was all the way back since February. So for the last eight months, we've had really good strength demonstrated above our R4. So we'll go into that quickly as we cover the camera of pivots in more detail. So let's go back to Bitcoin. Uh, we're here on the index chart and um, what we're going to look at is the the bigger picture so let's go let's pull out all the data here let's zoom out so just to recap bigger picture wave one two three fourth wave is a triangle converging triangle and then this is where our ending diagonal starts with the first wave in the second wave in we are now working on our third and then we've got a fourth and fifth to follow. Now, each subwave count of an ending diagonal is three waves. So that means that is your three waves. That is a three waves. The three waves up for the third leg, which probably best zooming in, is probably going to be a double three. So we've had our first three up. We've had a connecting wave. And we're probably going to get another three legs up then to make the end of this third wave. Then we get three legs down to make the fourth. And then three legs up to make the final fifth. Okay, so that's the, the bigger outlook. I know of you will be a lot of you will be thinking, what are you talking about? Why is the wave one massive? Well, it's the log scale. That's what happens to higher time, uh, sorry, higher value price action. It all gets squashed together. Uh, coming to the linear scale, you can appreciate this count a lot better. Okay, so just do that. Put auto on. So here, very clear. One, two, three, four, five. That's your first impulse. This is your second wave, very clear to see. It's the big corrective price action following the big impulse. Then very clearly the next impulse is here. That's your third wave. Then it all makes sense to get a big long duration fourth wave. Very clearly it's converging waves here. Uh, admittedly the final wave, the wave E of this triangle is very small indeed. So we've got an A, B, C, D and E. Okay, very small E wave, but nevertheless, all very fitting with the bigger picture and then the only way i can put this together the fact that we've got a three wave move up for the next leg is that this fits in with an ending diagonal why ending diagonal because of the three 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 scenario it's the only real obvious explanation that i can give for this very aggressive move to the upside yet following a three wave move and as i say this point here March, roughly March 2020, or well March 2020 is down here, but roughly around this point is where the Dow Jones also started its ending diagonal, which we can have a brief look at in a moment. Um, but yeah, so this is where it begins, three waves up, three waves down, and as I say, this is the 
halfway point for the three waves up um so here for the uh the third of the fifth wave i know it's getting complex we're looking at many degrees here but um yeah it's better seen on the log scale from here onwards but i needed to come onto this linear scale to just to explain it in more detail i can at this point just go on the dow jones so it's we're going to explain this in detail so it's worth going let's go on the monthly it's a beautiful chart we, we can zoom out all the way to the great depression it's worth doing so because the Elliott wave count is so clean the pitch for the way the pitchfork has been followed since 1932 just after the great depression in 1929 it has been so clean this move okay um so we've got a wave one a wave two a wave three okay then we get an expanding uh triangle wave uh, to finish our wave four this is our stagflationary 60s 70s period and then this is where we just get extensions of the fifth wave time and time again so the fifth wave actually starts here we've got an initial wave one a wave two and then the wave three of our fifth wave is a one two three four five and then we've got the major fourth of fifth so it's an expanding flat to uh, finish off with our financial crisis 2008 and then the fifth of fifth okay this is where it just keeps extending and extending so one two and then a one two three four five and then an expanding triangle again just like we had in our 60s 70s and then this is where the fifth of fifth is so it starts with a very it's looking very corrective this move up yeah and i have it as a three wave move up so it's the only again the only way that i can explain this kind of corrective move that we are kind of forming this aggressive move up as uh, so we got we put in the first we've done the second we're looking at a third and then a fourth and fifth to follow i estimate potentially kind of end of 2026 that we could get this major major blow off top but time will tell the first thing is just to focus on the the shorter term uh, the, the initial leg that we're currently in and i'm connecting the highs here to give us our estimated target for this converging wedge that we're looking to um to follow this is for the kind of ending diagonal that we're following so i wanted to throw this out there it's the dow jones correlation with the bitcoin chart so a further bit of information as to why i'm leaning towards that ending diagonal uh for bitcoin so back on the bitcoin index chart we're going to get back on the log scale we're going to make that a bit easier to visualize so here it is uh it's another reason that we've got this two roughly i'm going to call it 200k you can see 197k is where our price tag is there but roughly 200k we've got an intersection between the upper median line of the pitchfork which we have followed pretty nicely so far and the upper trend line here i have a target across most of the us indices as well as crypto for around march you know so just after the us uh president inauguration couple of months after uh, I believe that we're going to get that kind of strong strong move to the upside and then we're going to get a sizable correction before making the next leg up um, so obviously I don't want to look too far ahead I'm only looking from here to here okay so that's the move I'm calling at present so I do believe that with this US election we've eliminated a lot of alternative scenarios there are those I know a lot of people uh, influencers that would be talking about the possibility of at least a corrective scenario like this a b and c and you know what it's very reasonable to put that argument out there you know this has looked like a this has just been a three can you argue it's a five down not too sure but you can easily very argue with a double top like this you could get a double bottom rectangular bit of price action could be a flat pattern it's very reasonable to suggest that but the only major qualm i have with that scenario is the fact that look at this tight consolidation at resistance it just doesn't make sense for the initial leg for the major impulsive c leg down to have this big range beneath resistance okay so and it's the same argument for the other big bearish scenario which would have been an a b c d e ascending triangle so an a a b a c probably coming down into this range here and then a d and an e so these were potential scenarios that i did consider at one point okay this was probably prior to this very clear and obvious 
consolidation that was forming. So as I say, these were looking a lot less probable because of the tight consolidation. And as time went on into the US election, we had more and more consolidation beneath resistance. These likelihoods of these big capitulations down looked slimmer and slimmer, okay? But there did remain that other option, which would have been, was actually leaving this pitchfork, this upward pitchfork, to say this is a three wave move complete, and then we have an adjoining wave and another three waves up. Uh, and that would have meant that we have got the argument of, let's call it WXY, so some kind of WXYXZ to make a W, and then we have our correct corrective wedge here, and then we come down to here, maybe even taking out this low. It would have been a, a, a classic play by smart money, liquidating all the stops beneath this point here, uh, taking it so quickly to the downside, mopping up all of those um, those stops, and then sending it in the direction it desires. Okay, it would have been classical, but I don't see how that can be factored in now with the outcome with the US election. So this scenario, in my opinion, has been taken off the table, and I had, I've mentioned to the group many, many times, the likelihood of that was slim because I see us following this pitchfork very, very nicely. Yeah, and also because as time goes on, the time available going into the US election for that sell-off was running out. It just became a lot less like less likely with time. So a quick reminder for those of you that do want the weekly analysis for crypto, uh, in particular on Bitcoin, I've got my group. Details are in the description of the video. I cover the coin of greatest interest, which for me for many, many months now has been Dogecoin. I cover it on a weekly basis alongside Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, that's where I believe the greatest opportunity is. I reserve that for my um, my group members only. It's hugely interesting in my opinion. Uh, really, really starting to move very well. Uh, and obviously with Elon Musk backing it also, it's quite exciting times. Um, so, but yeah, here we're focusing on the Bitcoin chart. So as I say, with the Trump election now, sorry, the uh, yeah ele Trump being elected, it's eliminated a lot of scenarios. So the bearish ones being the ones we've discussed. So now I'm seeing us very very likely adhering to this pitchfork, and so my invalidation point remains as it has done for a very long time. This lower warning line, okay. And if it is to drop beneath the lower warning line, I would uh, I, that's fine. I would leave any position that I'm in and wait for it to get back above to give me the confirmation that was back within the upward trend. Then look to further long. Okay, but I've got great, much greater conviction now that we are adhering to this pitchfork and it is the upper median line that we're targeting around March, connecting the trend line that is in play for the ending diagonal scenario that kind of correlates with the Dow Jones pretty, pretty well uh, following the COVID crash of March 2020. Um, so that, yeah, that's the bigger picture. All right, so let's now discuss this move so um let's get down onto the lower time frame so let's go on the daily so it is worth mentioning i know a lot of people have had that concern especially those elliott wave enthusiasts and you know that i'm a huge huge fan of elliott wave okay but the, i i have to say it time and time again there is a time when a certain tool is made for a job and when you've just got to accept that this is not the right time for it and clearly, the most important thing here is the fundamentals, the, the outcome of the US election. And going into that US election, the likelihood of a breakout was unlikely, but the likelihood of anything happening prior to the US election got slimmer and slimmer as time went on. I know in my last video, I spoke about the potential of a, a, a mini breakout into 100K. Um, obviously, as time went on, I made my group aware that the likelihood of that is looking unlikely now, we're likely just to move sideways. Um, but um, yeah, even yeah, so even that move, that mini breakout wasn't able to occur. So now here we have it. So have we broken out yet is the big question. So we have, first of all, a downward trend line clearly broken. Okay, so a lot of people will be looking at that trend line, nice retest of it, and then shot to the upside with the US election. Very nice to see, classic bit of a retest of a trend line there. Okay, then there's the argument of a breakout from a pitchfork point of view. So uh, 
brilliant to see we've broken the upper median line i don't really think we need to wait for the upper warning line to call this a true breakout i think already you can argue having broken the upper median line convincingly it's a breakout but then there's the argument we're at previous all-time highs so no doubt there are going to be those shorts that believe that this could still capitulate especially considering the elliott wave scenario here is is not impulsive at all it is that these waves are very overlappy so very easily you can say this is a w one correction second correction and then we've got another move down however with the u.s election outcome i think this is looking very very improbable okay um so here we are we're still in this range once we get through past this all-time high things are likely to start moving very very quickly now we have of course got the fed interest rate decision tomorrow many people will have overlooked this because they've been focused on the uh, uh, u.s election but yes the fed interest rate decision is tomorrow and as we all know as we approach catalysts we often get a bit of a pause going into it so i wouldn't be too surprised we've had our initial move up we might just get a bit of a pause going into that fed interest rate decision and it might be only at that point that we continue the strong move to the upside okay so that's what i'm thinking is the most likely scenario here I'm going to pull up the camera of the pivots in a moment to show some other possible scenarios for where we might retrace to before going higher. But that is the most likely scenario that I see that we get a tight consolidation into tomorrow, into the Fed interest rate decision before then continuing the bullish trend. Um, so, yeah, as I say, I know, you know, it's never wise to go long at previous highs, you know, uh, but uh, you've got to kind of piece it all together, have your invalidation point. This market could move very, very quickly, very, very soon. Um, <clears throat> so we've discussed the Elliott Wave. We've discussed the pitchforks. We've discussed the fundamentals. Now I want to pull up the camera of pivots. Really, really interesting. So first of all, I want to pull it up here on the monthly time frame. Okay. So this is really, really nice to see. So all the way back from February this year, eight months on, we've never put a closing candle beneath the R4. I've mentioned over the past five years in particular the significance of these camera pivots. The way we bounce off the lines time and time again, especially going into the end of the each uh, year. Because obviously on the monthly time frame, each period here represents a year. So this being obviously the month of 2024, it's been an incredible month. A tight consolidation for almost the whole year waiting for this year's election. So this is a huge amount of calls waiting for that effect. We've got the, the, um, the finish to the calls now, I believe with that US election result, a pro crypto candidate, a very pro crypto candidate um, won the election. And now it's just waiting to fly. We've had all the other fundamentals kind of being factored in going into this big wait for the US election. Let's just come back on our weekly time frame. So we had the Bitcoin ETF decision round here. Fantastic outcome. Didn't even retest this consolidation. Ethereum ETF was around here, so that's been factored in. So all of these things have been factored in, but not yet kind of massively broken out because of that one big uncertainty that was the US election. And now, as I say, a hugely pro crypto uh, candidate has won the election. There's every argument for this thing to absolutely rock it. OK, so that's why I've got a very bullish stance. That's why I've got a very high upside target, although I know other people have some astronomical figures to the upside. I like to take it one step at a time. I think it's a modest target that I have. Um, so yeah, here, let's just come back to our monthly Camarilla Pivot. So really, really nice to see. I would advise people to incorporate Camarilla Pivots as much as they can. Uh, so that's the monthly. I've started to use this monthly more than the weekly now because they both represent the year period. And obviously the monthly being a higher time frame than the weekly, it's more significant. But the next most important chart is, will be the daily where we do get some different lines uh, where each period here representing a month. Okay, so this is our month of November. This was our month of October. So there was a slight, it was a really good finish to October, I have to say. So we, we used the S3 as support, and then we got through the R4. But as you can see, there was a little show of weakness going into the end of October and allowed for a sizable pullback all the way from 73.5 through to 66. And I was thinking we might just tag 66k before this big move up going into the US election but in fact it was front run and we've absolutely flown to the upside market didn't want to wait okay 
Now, I wanted to pull up this chart with the, the Camilla pivots here because there is that potential still for a bit of a pullback. Yeah, there is that scenario, some some arguable bad news, maybe people trying to send Trump to prison, contesting the uh, the election results. Who knows what could happen, okay? Um, I think it's been a pretty sizable victory, so I think the, the likelihood of any kind of legal challenges are probably slim, but who knows what's going to happen, okay? If so... Maybe we get these pullbacks, 66K, maybe 62K. Even a move to 62K, we stay within the pitchfork lower warning line, which, as I mentioned, is my invalidation point, okay? But I think it's a lot more likely, a lot more likely now, let's take off these other annotations, a lot more likely that we just use this level as a temporary resistance point. It's also obviously the previous all-time high. Hover around 74K, wait for that Fed interest rate decision before making the next move up. And I do think this month we will push through the R4, which is at 78K. Uh, so ultimately, very likely to be a strong month indeed. Um, and then we can briefly look at the four hourly chart. This here, each period representing a week, obviously very strong here. We've broken the R4 already. Could we get a retest of the R4 at 72K? Perhaps, maybe, just going into that Fed interest rate decision. Um, so yeah, we don't need to go into too much detail there. So we've gone through the Camarilla pivots, just demonstrating, especially on the monthly time frame, the reasons for that kind of conviction in the bullish outcome. Let's get our annotations back on. So yeah, that is the big picture. So I've told you my invalidation. I've gone through all the kind of alternative scenarios that have been eliminated over time, especially after the knowing the result of this US election. It's a big upside target, but I've mentioned why I think it's reasonable because of what I believe is a monumental outcome for what could be all the markets, but in particular crypto. Okay, And it's been waiting a year for this. It's been waiting a year. It's gone sideways for a year. And so it's absolutely dying to fly right now. Um, so, And don't expect it to happen overnight. This is likely to go on for months and months. Okay, So be patient. Uh, I believe this is the very reasonable uh, target to look out for right here. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up there. I look forward to doing more content for you guys. But as I say, more detailed analysis and also covering the almighty Dogecoin. Feel free to join Cryptology where everyone is welcome. And you also get access to my full educational material also. All right, guys, going to wrap it up with that. Take care. Thank you for your attention and watching through to the end of this video. Now I know there's a lot of you watching that would like to learn how to confidently trade the financial markets independently and I also know how confusing this can be regardless of how many stressful hours that you put in. For that reason I've put together all of my trading knowledge in a complete course titled The Works. The Works consists of thorough and jargon free lessons broken down into a comprehensive curriculum providing you with a holistic understanding of the markets and giving you an accelerated journey to being able to analyze and trade the markets all by yourself. And for those of you that are looking for my weekly detailed video analysis on crypto and stocks, then there's Cryptology, which is a subscription that will also give you access to the works while subscribed. For more information on what's included in the works or Cryptology, you can head on over to wave618.com or alternatively use the links in the description to this video for a limited time 50% discount offer. So I hope to see you on the other side, but in the meantime, if you would like to sample some of my educational videos, then you can check out these videos that you can see on your screen right now. Thanks once again, and until next time, take care.